meteors carrying very small organisms and bacteria landed in your ocean and brought life into your sea. And this led to the evolution of some of the first species in your world. However, that was not how all species arrived on your planet. Hello, we are the Pleiadian Council and we thank you for allowing this transmission to take place at this moment of your time today. Hello, Mike Mahalo here. And I want to find out, what about the origins of mankind? How did our species start on this planet? Humans were created by the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki were humanoid-like beings who visited your world for the purposes of mining gold to perpetuate their own species' survival, essentially, as they were on a planet that went through different sorts of solar and cosmic cycles that caused their atmosphere to deteriorate. They had a technology that used gold to stabilize the atmosphere, and they needed to find gold in other places. Your world was very rich in gold, especially at that time, and so a specific faction or group of the Anunnaki came to your planet with that purpose of getting the gold. And they spliced their DNA with that of early primate species that are very related to what you consider Sasquatch or Bigfoot and created the first humans. You've said that we were originally created, genetically engineered, as a slave race for working in mines. Uh, where were these mines? Your continents were in a very different configuration at this time. There were continents that you have now lost, and they were much closer together. So we could not really say it's a specific place in your world, though these same general terrain have now become what you know as Africa, India, Australia, and South America mostly. But there were many different operations all over the planet. How was the gold transported? Were there like space portals? No. Though there were certain hubs that were designed for some of the bigger crafts to simply make it easier, but the general craft that they had could land on any sort of terrain. So approximately how long was this mining operation happening? Approximately 1,500 years, which is a blink in time when you look at it from the evolutionary perspective. Had these same alien species tried the same thing on other planets, and had they succeeded? They actually brought some humans to other planets to extract different resources from them, but most of those operations failed and those people died. How did all that end, that period where we were created and then we were abandoned? It ended because the collective of the Anunnaki discovered what had been going on covertly for a very long time and they insisted that their mm, brethren stop doing what they're doing and remove themselves from Earth. In what way were we monitored in the period after the Anunnaki left? The Anunnaki came back and visited humans annually, checking in and participating in some religious festivals. As the humans worshipped Anun the Anunnaki as God still, and these rituals and moments were very important for the early human, but gradually over some hundreds of years, these 
experiences stopped happening and humans were left to their own devices entirely. Many ancient cultures participated and exchange energy and information with ETs. ETs even help certain groups and of people and cultures that your archaeologists claim disappeared to shift into different dimensional planes of Earth. Just like Sasquatch came to inhabit a different dimensional plane of the same planet that you live on, certain ancient cultures still exist on different dimensional planes of Earth. And there was ET involvement that supported them in making that decision to transition. Though there came a time in which this isolation had to become complete for humans to evolve on their own. There are so many ancient sites on our planet, unexplained ancient sites, Quebecli Tepe, Mexico, Angkor Wat, various different periods. Are any of these from the period when the Anunnaki were there? No, nothing really remains from the Anunnaki days, except some things that may be buried beneath the ice sheet in Antarctica. I'm curious how the human race spread throughout the planet. Were we created in different places or just one place? And then how did we spread uh, across the planet? The Anunnaki helped humans spread across the planet. And again, at this point, the continents were much closer together. There was a vast ocean with some islands, but there wasn't as much space between the drifting continents. I want to get a clearer idea of the periods of our history. The first civilization can be called the Hyperborean time. There are certain things that we cannot fully reveal about these times, though we can say that this was a civilization that was very much centered around the connection to the Anunnaki and their impact on humanity. There was a sense of abandonment during these times, and it brought these beings to feel sometimes lost. Nonetheless, they did retain advanced technologies left behind by the Anunnaki because many of these technologies were not things that they developed themselves. They did not know properly how to manage what they had inherited. And this met with their sense of abandonment, brought them to become very divided and a great war emerged that vastly lowered the population of the species to a point that there were few humans left and those that did remain came to evolve into the Lemurian and Atlantean species with the assistance of other extraterrestrials who returned to your planet afterwards. It's, uh, it's incredibly cold on the top of this mountain, even though it's <laughs> it's this global warming. It's very cold up the top of the mountain here. So I have a question um, about how the humans evolved within the range of temperatures. Also the, the, the change of temperatures, that there were ice ages and then warming and different climates in different places. Humans are very adaptable creatures and as your planet became much colder at times and climates changed, humans learned how to adapt to the colder environments. And this was done in different parts of the world in many, many different ways. Igloos are one example, though more often structures were built. And during the winter months, these structures were always heated with fire. And humans lived all together with their families and 
also with their animals in these structures and bringing as much biological heat together as possible to maintain warmth. The cold led to the necessity to hoard and this hoarding of food and resources thus led to an increase in the greed and cunning nature of those who live in the colder places. Thus you can see that these sorts of northern peoples became the ones to colonize much of the world. Well, thank you very much. That's all from us for today. And I hope you enjoyed this broadcast. On a spaceship of Babel, we are guiding through the stars on a five year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars. A celestial encounter on a future now is arc, and you both hear us coming as we whisper in the dark. There's an Ewok just behind me as we try to disembark here And hope you can know as we whisper in the dark Like a spark, I am lying, Alice, seeing as we.